602. Good evening, all my gray-haired children. And all those who are not gray yet, God bless you. <laughs> and I got to say, happy birthday, Jesus. Huh? Yeah. Is that what he's about? This is his party. All right. Well, let's open in prayer. Please bow your heads. Heavenly Father, we gather tonight to commemorate the birth of your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, who you blessed this world with his presence and for our salvation. We give you all the glory and honor to you, O Lord, as we celebrate his birthday tonight. In Jesus' name we pray, and all God's people say, Amen. 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 Well, why don't we start off, let's see, this, matter of fact, uh, I think somebody wanted to sing a song, a quick one here. Angel, did you have an open song that you wanted to sing? No, it wasn't a song, it was a prayer. A prayer, did oh, you? Prayer. Please, step up to the mic. <coughs> oh, I thought you were going to sing this. <laughs> well, I Wait. think it's just... <laughs> All right. Let's see the okay. This is the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, the glory, Forever and ever. Ah, ah, ah. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. And now, Dave, would you all stand as we do some praise and worship music? Oops. Now, this is a pretty upbeat, bluesy tune, so we're going to have to sing it out loud. Okay, we got our angel choir here. Oh 
we see that all four Advent candles uh, leading up to this joyous occasion have been lit. But in addition to that, we have one more candle that was lit today. That's called the Christ candle. And we're going to be lighting more candles later on, but I don't want you, all your candles to burn down right now. We'll just let these burn down over here. Before we get to that point, I just want to reflect on the history of this joyous occasion. In the book of Luke, chapter 1, verses 26 to 38, we see that Christ's birth is announced to Mary. Now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women. But when, he, when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and considered what, what manner of greeting this was. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb, and bring forth a son, and his name shall be called Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Then Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I do not know a man? And the angel answered and said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of, his, of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also that the Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Now indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in, in her old age. And this is now the sixth month for her who is called barren. For with God, nothing is impossible. Then Mary said, Behold, the maidservant of the Lord. Let this be according to your word. And the angel departed from her. This is the word of God. Do you have another song, Dave? Let's do it in the manger. Let's do that. Fire. Thank you. 
Now the question is, how and why was Mary, out of all the women on earth, selected to be the mother of, of the Lord? you got to know this. But, you know, as uh, Pastor Terry told me, when I, I invited him to be here tonight, but he had family coming in, and he told me, he says, Drake, I know why you're inviting me. And I go, why? He says, you want me to do to say all those big words in the, in the, in the baguettes. Well, that was just the first uh, comment I got. And then I was over at rehearsal with Dave, and Dave says to me, oh, Lord, please don't do the baguettes. He says, I'll fall asleep and fall off the chair. <laughs> ah, but then a Holy Spirit moment, and my wife says to me, why don't we get audience participation? And I go, hmm, that's interesting. And I says, I could put uh, all the different verses there and cut up in a little piece of paper. Says, but what if I don't have enough people? Yeah, there's, there's a whole bunch of verses here. I think this goes up to like 92 verses. But I'd like volunteers to help me with this. So who would like to help me? Just one page. And so you're, you'll read to number five. You'll start at number six and go to ten. How many pages do we have? hundreds. <laughs> <laughs> you'll start at 11. Do I have a volunteer? Okay. I'll take it back. Well, you, in, in order now, so that they, all of them are going to go in order. Okay. Now keep them in order now, because I don't have the master sheet up here. I cut it into pieces. Oh no, I got that. I got that, but I have my. I don't have my number. I'll try to keep uh, keep up with them. And numbers right there. Uh, no, no, don't. Dave, cut it out. <laughs> okay. The final one? John. Yes, I know you'd love to do the final one. Okay, so I will ask you if you would speak as loud as you can when you read it. Maybe you want to stand up and face the audience when you do it. Congregation. Okay, don't don't face the congregation. Can you stand up? Okay, good. <laughs> Project. Go for it. Number one. Then they won't keep hearing it. Okay. <laughs> Book of Matthew 1, 1 to 25. The genealogy of Jesus Christ. The book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. So it begins. Abraham begot Isaac. Isaac begot Jacob, and Jacob begot Judah and his brother. Others. Brothers. Oh, Quiet sorry. Day. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Judah begot Perez and Zerah by Tamar. Perez begot Hezron, and Hezron begot Ram. Ram begot Am Amnabadab. Amnabadab begot Nashon. Amadab. That's good. Thank you. Next. Oh boy, this is tongue twister. We're on Nashon. And Nashon begot Salmon. 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 Sorry. Okay. Salmon begot Boaz by Rahab. Boaz begot Obed by Ruth. Obed begot Jesse, and Jesse begot David the king. All right, next. And Jesse. Yeah. Where's the next number? What number were you on? What number? Uh, Eleven to sixteen. What number are we looking for? Sixteen. We got sixteen here. Fifteen. Sixteen. Sixteen. Okay. The wife of Eureka, Solomon begot Wolrek, Rehab, and Rehab begot Abijah, and Abijah begot Asa, and Asa begot Joseph. 
of both the tracks and draw the tracks the dots draw them and draw them the dots <coughs> Uzziah begot Jotham. Jotham begot Ahaz. Ahaz begot Hezekiah. Hezekiah begot Manasseh. Manasseh begot Ammon. And Ammon begot Josiah. Josiah begot Jochaniah. And his brothers, about the time they were carried away to Babylon. Number 30. And after they were brought to Babylon, Jochaniah begot Shekel, and Shekel begot Zerubbabel, and Zerubbabel begot Ashbeu. Okay. What number is that? 32. Okay, 33. 33. Yes. Abiud begot Elohim, and Elohim begot Azor, Azor begot Zadok, Zadok begot Ahim, and Ahim begot Eliud. Eliud begot Eleazar, Eleazar begot Matan. Wow, that's awesome. Okay. And that ended with number what? That ended with 39. 39, so 40. And Matan begot Jacob, and Jacob begot Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was born Jesus, who is called Christ. So all the generations from Abraham to David are 14 generations. Wow. Very good, guys. Thank you for your help. You know I am. So we see from David until captivity in Babylon are 14 generations. And from the captivity in Babylon until the Christ are 14 generations. Hmm. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife for that which is conceived in her is the Holy Spirit, and she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, and he will save his people from their sins. So all of this was done, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the, by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. Then Joseph, being aroused from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord commanded him and took to him his wife and did not know her until she had brought forth her first son and he called his name Jesus. In the book of uh, Luke chapter 1, verses uh, 26 to 38, we read, In those days Caesar Augustus issued a decree that was a census that would be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up to the town of Nazareth in Galilee, to, Ju to Judea, to Bethlehem, to the town of David, because he belonged to the house of the line of David. And he went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. But while they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her, her son, her firstborn son. She wrapped him in clothes and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Now just imagine. Imagine the difficulty of this young couple having traveled over a large distance here and they find themselves out in the street, exhausted, discouraged, nerves on edge, and hoping, hope is just running thin about this time. What are they gonna do? 
Yeah, were they wondering if God is going to pull them through this? But God does, doesn't he? Sure does, and probably in a way that they never expected. Perhaps God will do this for you too, this Christmas, pull you through that hard time in a way you never expected. You know, I, I consider Jesus my good friend, but I've also learned from how he he's, has worked and helped me so many times that I call him my 11th hour Jesus. And he is. He was there at the 11th hour and he found a place for Joseph and Mary. And he found places for me so many times. That he's let me go through things and try to do it my way sometimes. But even when I've asked him ahead of time, could he help me? He just, patience, you'll see. He's the 11th hour Jesus. He's always there to hit a home run in that final run. When you think things are just as bad as they could be, wait for him. Wait and see what he does for his glory, not ours. All right, we got another song, Dave? Okay, choir? <laughs> Angels? <laughs> My peeps? That's cute. <laughs> what child is this? Christ's candle has been lit tonight, and it should remind us that indeed Jesus is the light of the world, is he not? So now I invite a couple of assistants. I'm going to need some people that have been approved by the fire marshal, <laughs> or just people that aren't afraid to handle fire. Can I get two volunteers, please? I'll take you, Jim. Okay. Yes. And we 
have a box of candles here, and we're going to light them for you, and then pass them out, and then we'll dim the lights. Okay, I'll help you there. Okay. Let's pass it up. Can you handle that? Yeah, sure. Okay. We'll all fish in here. Okay, you want to hold the down there? Okay, sure. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm.